Right, so in my last Subaru video, um, I covered a 1,600 mile uh, cross country journey in my Subaru Cross Trek while towing a U Haul trailer. Also, I didn't mention this in the video, there were like two cats, two bunnies, a handful of fish, and a shrimp collection. So, all that to say, it was a pretty big ordeal getting uh, across the country. Uh, with the cross trek, but I prepared. If you haven't seen that video before, hopefully there's like a something you can click up here. Or I'll include it in the description as well. But the TLDR of that video is basically I prepped the cross trek for this cross country journey, to towing a five by eight U-Haul trailer. Um, upgraded the cross trek with a class three tow hitch, uh, a scan gauge to monitor vitals a uh, backup camera or a rear view camera to monitor my blind spots. And last but not least, an oversized, way too big for the application cooler for the CVT, Constant Variable Transmission. This was a kit put together by uh, Mishimoto, designed for a WRX, so I can't say that you know I wasn't warned. It did hook up, I was able to use the brackets uh, somewhat, I did have to drill a hole, but it did do what I needed it to do, which was keep the CVT at a good temperature while towing across country. It's, it's way overkill um, and could actually be bad for the transmission. And I say this because the kit is basically unregulated. The, the flow of the transmission fluid through the cooler is unregulated regardless of temperature. So that really doesn't matter when you're in high temperatures or under high stress conditions because you really want that uh, cooler to work. But now we're well into fall, uh, winter is approaching, and it's not great to have this massive cooler for the transmission fluid uh, because it can prevent the transmission from uh, heating up to the correct temperature. We want our CVT fluid temperature in a good range. We don't want it too hot, for example, when you're towing or in the middle of the desert or on a racetrack or conditions like that, but we also don't want it too cold, like in icy conditions. We want that fluid to be warm so it can be at the right viscosity and lubricate the transmission properly. So it's really not great to have this unregulated flow to this massive cooler when we have colder temperatures coming. This is an issue I'm hoping to tackle in this video by introducing a thermostat into this CVT transmission fluid cooling system that I built from the Mishimoto kit. Basically, we want the circuit open to the CVT cooler when the fluid reaches the right temperature. And we want that circuit closed when it's not warm enough. So I have here a couple things I want to show you. First to that end, a uh, derail fluid control thermostat kit, part number 25011. It says it's a kit, but really all you get with it is the thermostat here and uh, some instructions. So I don't know why they would consider that a kit, but that's that's what it's called. Now, according to the box, it can flow up to 20 gallons per minute, uh, which is way more than we need for our, our little CVT transmission. It's also rated up to 200 PSI, and I imagine the CVT um, doesn't put out that kind of pressure into its fluid. So I think we're good there as well. Now on the inlet and outlet ports, it uses a 3 8 uh, NPT standard, that's a national pipe threading standard uh, for the ports. So to use this you're going to need uh, 3 8 inch NPT standard adapters uh, to connect with your hoses. And the box also says that it can bypass the transmission cooler at 180 degrees. Now what's actually going on with this thermostat and how does it work? I'm going to go ahead and show you um, the inlet and outlet. You can see through this, it's only impeded by a spring. And, and this bottom here, fluid can also flow through here too. It's, it's mostly unimpeded. Now what you can't see is that there's a chamber that passes through here. This thermostat is cold right now, meaning that uh, that is open. And so fluid can flow from your uh, transmission all the way through to the cooler and, and back, but it's just that when this central part is open, the fluid wants to take the path of least resistance. So most of it, the vast majority of that transmission fluid is gonna go through the chamber and right back to the transmission. So again, inside you can see there's a spring, if you can focus again. However, there is a waxy substance on the bottom here. Once it warms up to 180 degrees and the spring will indeed close the central section here, forcing the fluid to actually go through the, the cooler and go back to the transmission. And that's how it works. That's basically the same theory 
of how your mechanical thermostat for your engine coolant works. So that's pretty cool. Now, not only do I have that thermostat, I also have this uh, derail uh, fluid control thermostat mount kit that is uh, designed for the thermostat. The kit actually includes the 3 8 inch uh, NPT uh, barb fittings, which we need to fit to the Mishimoto lines that came with the CBT cooler kit. Everything should be sized to work, and hopefully I won't have to uh, drill too many holes in this process. I'm going to try to avoid drilling a lot of holes. So now let's try to get this thing mounted. Now before I desecrate this poor Subaru's warranty any further... <laughs> I'll briefly explain how the CVT cooling system works and how I'm planning to improve on it. As you can see, I've completely dismantled the intake system to make access a bit easier. This is the factory CVT cooler and warmer. When the transmission is cold, these two fat hoses bring in warm engine coolant, which warms the CVT fluid, then exits the cooler slash warmer and returns to the coolant system. And if the CVT fluid is running warmer than the engine coolant, which stabilizes it around 193 degrees Fahrenheit, that same engine coolant circuit takes on heat from the CVT fluid and dumps it into the engine coolant. This works really well, but there's only so much heat that this little cooler slash warmer can take out of the CVT, and that's where the auxiliary cooler comes in. You see, the factory cooler has two additional ports, one on the top left and one on the bottom right which can be used to hook up an additional CVT fluid cooler. The top left port here is the CVT fluid outlet. Hot CVT fluid comes out of this port on the cooler. The bottom right port is the CVT fluid inlet. Cooled CVT fluid goes back into the cooler and transmission through here. You can also tell these ports apart because the inlet has a 90 degree bend while the outlet just comes straight out of the cooler. And when this cross track came out of the factory, all bright and shiny without any YouTubers having molested it, the inlet and outlet were connected with a single bendy bit of hose. And as you can see, we are no longer standard. Standard! The outlet is hooked up to a 3 8 inch hose that goes to the auxiliary CVT cooler at the front of the car from the Mishimoto WRX CVT cooler kit. And then the cold CVT fluid comes out of the other end of that auxiliary cooler and back in through the inlet of the factory CVT cooler. Now, how did I know which was which? Well, I took the car on a drive to warm it up, pulled over, and popped the hood. And very carefully, because the engine was still quite hot, grabbed both hoses to determine which was warmer. Because, in theory, the warmer hose should be heated by hot CVT fluid coming out of the transmission, whereas the cooler hose will have been cooled by that crisp, refreshing CVT fluid from the auxiliary cooler. Ah. And there you have it, the CVT cooling system in its current, perfectly functional state. So let's mess with it. I'm gonna wreck it! I'm gonna wreck it! I started by test fitting the new thermostat, and fortunately was able to use an existing bracket and bolt to secure half of the thermostat, and only needed to drill one hole to get this thing attached. Great! Fewer holes is better. See, looks like it belongs there. Now, let's connect the thing for real. The next step is going to be to prepare the thermostat, so I'm taking some standard PTFE plumber's tape and wrapping it around the threads of the barb fittings to protect against the leaks. PTFE melts at around 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than twice the maximum we'd ever see out of this system, so there's no concern of it melting here. And to add a little artistic flair and to help identify things a little better, I painted the arrows on the hot supply side of the thermostat. Then back under the hood, I marked and cut the hoses, being very careful not to spill too much of that sweet, sweet CVT juice. For this application, I found that SAE size 6 hose clamps were just about perfect for the Mishimoto 3 8 inch hoses here. Then it was time to button everything back up and test it out. 
See? Fits right in. Looks like it belongs there, right? So in a previous episode with the Crosstrack, I mentioned that I installed a ScanGauge 2 OBD2 scanner in the car for keeping tabs on engine coolant temperature and CVT fluid temperature. And what I found here was pretty cool. Now without that CVT fluid thermostat installed on a crisp fall morning of around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I took a 10 minute drive in stop and go traffic and the CVT fluid rose by 20 degrees and the water temperature rose by 99 degrees. Now after installing the thermostat, on a morning just a few degrees cooler than that on a similar 10 minute drive, I noticed that the CVT fluid rose by 32 degrees and the water temperature rose by 129 degrees. In other words, in very similar conditions, driving with the CVT thermostat installed allowed the CVT fluid to warm up by an extra 12 degrees in 10 minutes, which was the goal all along. So, hey, we did it. We did it, you guys. But note something extra happened there too. The coolant warmed by an extra 30 degrees in the same time frame. Now, how did that happen? Well, remember that the factory CVT fluid cooler is transferring heat between the CVT fluid and the engine coolant. When the auxiliary CVT coolant circuit is open, it serves as a heat sink for that engine coolant as well. And with that auxiliary CVT coolant circuit closed, the CVT fluid is warming up faster and it's not acting as an extra heat sink anymore. So that means the engine coolant can also warm up faster. That's good for emissions, that's good for fuel economy, that's good for oil longevity, and really for the car in general. Uh, because remember, this whole exercise is about keeping temperatures in the best range. And when it comes to the engine, we want the coolant around 193 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and this CVT thermostat in a roundabout way is helping us do that faster. So let's talk next steps. Uh, this thermostat is a good addition, but long-term I'd really like to replace that heat exchanger up front with a, a smaller one. Uh, the Mishimoto WRX CVT cooler, as I said before, it is massive and it takes up a lot of space and blocks a lot of airflow to the uh, radiator and it's just plain overkill for the applications that I'm using uh, this car for, which namely is you know, light duty towing and camping duties. So I wanna put a smaller auxiliary CVT fluid cooler up front and also pair that with a small oil cooler if I can, which is kind of a missing piece to the puzzle because um, during my towing adventure, I noticed that the oil temperature was kind of an outlier and I'd like to keep that in sort of the same range as the other fluids um, as the demands increase on the car. But all that can wait. Uh, the car is in a good place for handling the cooler temperatures and I'm really happy with how this all turned out. So with that being said, uh, that's all for now. I wanna thank you for watching. Be good to each other and we'll see you down the road. <music>